the biggest, smartest, strangest, and most powerful. We are counting down the 10 most amazing super ships on the ocean today. The most unique, toughest vessels human beings can construct. From supersized ferries and mighty tech. Super ship number 10 in our countdown, Ulysses, the largest vehicle ferry in the world. The Irish Sea had never seen anything like it. A floating city, population 2,000. With hundreds of cars and giant tractor trailers stacked below its decks. Named for an Irish literary epic, the super ferry Ulysses is itself a masterpiece. Four times a day, Ulysses crosses between Ireland and Wales. But when the gales of winter blow across this ancient and dangerous trade route, then comes the true test of the largest capacity car ferry in the world. It is as big as two Irish soccer fields. In the Guinness Book of Records, Ulysses is the world's largest capacity car ferry. Stacked higher than a Dublin skyscraper with 12 decks, engine room, car and truck decks, passenger, crew and communications decks, Ulysses is a self-contained community on the water. Deck 1 contains all the propulsion and mechanical equipment, engines and generators. Deck 2 houses the service areas and can also store trailers. Deck 3 is the main trailer deck. Deck 4 carries cars. Decks 5, 6 and 7 more trailer decks. Passenger cars are on deck 8 with access to the lifeboats on both port and starboard sides. Deck 9 is the first public deck on Ulysses. Among the amenities, all linked by a promenade walkway that encircles the deck, are the many restaurants and pubs, two cinemas and a shopping arcade, children's play area and games arcade. Deck 10 has the majority of the accommodation areas for passengers and crew. With the bridge up forward. Deck 11 is the observation deck with a special lounge for very important clients, the truckers. Finally, on deck 12, 51 meters above her keel, the communication facilities, radar masts, and a helicopter landing pad. But her huge size makes the three-hour crossing of the fierce, foggy Irish Sea a potentially dangerous affair. From a dead start, the twin four-blade propellers and thrusters, one in the stern and three in the bow, force Ulysses away from dockside. Thrusters throwing out tons of water as they struggle against the howling wind. Each thruster has a cross-mounted propeller capable of pushing the fully loaded ship sideways. With such massive propulsion power, the thrusters can turn Ulysses in its own length. Each of the four thrusters is driven by 2,400 kilowatts of power, or 3,000 horsepower. That's an incredible 12,000 horsepower, more power just to go sideways than many ships have in their entire propulsion systems. And it's not just the wind that Ulysses must push against. The River Liffey is plagued with strong and dangerous cross currents as well. Captain Declan O'Connor has been in sea service for some 35 years. 15 as a master of various ferries. He takes these tricky maneuvers in stride. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the captain speaking. I've just cleared the River Liffey there now. There's a southerly gale blowing at the moment. And I shouldn't uh, hold us up too much. Other vessels joining Ireland to the United Kingdom will not depart today. They're worried about passenger comfort and shifting cargo in the aggravated sea state. But Ulysses was designed and built for just such a voyage and will forge ahead into the treacherous Irish Sea right on schedule. 
punching through a severe winter gale and waves that are reaching the 10 meter mark, Ulysses maintains a speed of nearly 40 kilometers an hour, arriving off Hollyhead Harbor right on schedule. Inside the harbor approaches, wind gusts of 120 kilometers an hour are reported. That's a very powerful force pushing this giant vessel in directions the captain does not want to go. Now the captain really has his hands full. Two propellers that can go ahead and astern. Two rudders that can steer independently. Four thrusters, plus a tugboat acting as a fifth thruster. A final test of nerves as an investment of 500 million US dollars flirts with a wall of solid steel and concrete. But Ulysses overcomes the storm's final fury and the world's biggest vehicle ferry arrives safely at her berth. Our super ship number 10 delivers her cargo. A perfect docking, defeating a near perfect storm. Our countdown of the top 10 super ships in the world continues. From number 10, the gigantic ferry Ulysses, to number 9. Mark Twain called them floating wedding cakes. The steam powered passenger boats, cargo boats, and showboats that plied the Mississippi River in the 19th century. But there's a 21st century successor to these historic paddle wheelers that really takes the cake. Number nine in our top 10 super ships, the American Queen. $65 million worth of high luxury and hot air. A graceful bow to American tradition with some surprises hidden below and above her polished hardwood decks. Her steel hull is 125 meters long with a beam of 27 meters. Her six decks rise 30 meters from the waterline to the top of her fancy fluted smokestacks. The six decks named from the bottom up, main, cabin, Texas, observation, promenade, and sun deck. The special architectural features on board include a grand saloon and a history-filled dining room, modeled after a room aboard the J.M. White, a famous riverboat from the late 1800s. There's also a theater, which is a replica of a Western opera house and a reading room named for Mark Twain, where the old master humorist spirit can be felt and sometimes even seen. I say this and I say it with pride as captain, she is a beautiful, beautiful boat. You know, I think if I lived in the 1800s, I'd have been one of those boys sitting on a bluff yelling, steamboats are coming. On the big river, the challenge is to spin the paddle wheel slowly, yet powerfully enough, to fight the Mississippi's surging five-knot current. Surprisingly, the ultra-modern American Queen runs on a pair of 75-year-old engines salvaged from an old U.S. Army dredger and a boiler that generates 10,000 kilograms of steam every hour. But there are some amazing high-tech innovations, including a retractable wheelhouse and smokestacks that can be lowered when the six-story high American Queen passes under a five-story high bridge. high, the American Queen is far taller than any riverboat ever built. But this height allows for a lot of luxurious accommodation and entertainment space. All of the American Queen staterooms are spacious and continue the overall Victoriana theme with patterned wallpaper, carpets and many authentic period furnishings.
The period of travel that we try to represent and recreate is of that warm, grander period of travel. In an era where traveling just started, the river boats, paddle boats, were the first time Americans really got to travel. It's our super ship number nine, the American Queen. An irresistible invitation to slow down, breathe deep, and take life at river speed. Halfway around the world, in Southeast Asia, the challenge is not just to enjoy the scenery, but to make more of it. That's a job for super ship number eight, the Vasco da Gama. The world's most powerful trailing hopper suction dredger. A monster earth mover that can eat more than 30,000 tons of muck in a single swallow. Then pump it back out to create land where there was no land before. It would take 1,200 dump trucks more than four days to carry as much earth as Vasco da Gama moves in a two-hour operation. And those suction intakes are so powerful, they could drain a family-sized swimming pool in just two seconds. Built in Germany, Vasco da Gama is twice the size of the world's second biggest dredger. But the number eight super ship in our top 10 countdown had to sail all the way to Southeast Asia to find her best clients. Scooping out a new container port for the Malaysian government with load after load of sand from 144 kilometers offshore. The business end of this incredible vessel is the two suction or drag heads. Each of them weighs 55 tons. They hang off the end of 35 meters of piping. Like giant vacuum cleaner heads, they scrape the river bottom and with the aid of water jets and a truly fearsome sucking action provided by the world's largest submerged dredge pumps, it can transport the clay water mix up to the gigantic storage hopper. With both drag heads in operation, the 33,000 cubic meter hopper will be filled in about an hour. When she wants to discharge cargo, the ship will use one of three methods. Pumping ashore a distance of up to 10 kilometers through a floating pipe, which takes about an hour. Discharging through doors on the bottom, which is the fastest method and takes 15 minutes. Or rainbowing, a spectacular process which sends a spray out a distance of 100 meters for just over an hour. On the bridge, the dredging operator is reading data on four main fronts. How fast the vessel is traveling over the sand and in what direction keeping the ship at the edge of the sandbank. At the same time, he has to make sure that river currents or tides don't force the suction heads under the hull, where they could smash into a spinning propeller. He also has control over which of the eight hoppers he is directing the sand into. Loading too much at one time into the front of the ship could bring the stern and the propellers out of the water. What's worse, with so much weight coming aboard so quickly, the ship could easily capsize. 24 hours a day, this king of the bottom feeders is on the job. Vasco da Gama, the ultimate earth mover, and our super ship number eight. So far, we've sailed aboard the world's largest car ferry, the most magnificent paddle wheeler on the mighty Mississippi, and a giant suction dredger that can make a city out of a sandbar. Coming up next, a boyhood dream inspires the world's biggest sailboat and a big fat Greek oil tanker that's so massive, it takes half an hour to come to a stop. We're counting down the 10 most thrilling super ships in the world. It's a roster that includes only one sailboat, but what a sailboat. 
our number seven super ship, the Royal Clipper. A five-masted square rigger whose main mast soars as high as a 20-story building. As she glides through the islands of the Caribbean, the only word for this super ship is breathtaking. The Royal Clipper is a living link to the glorious and glamorous golden age of sail. With a $60 million price tag, her owner is Sweden's Mikhail Kraft. And her inspiration was another five-masted giant called the Prusen. When I was a boy, I got the ship model for a Christmas once from my father of the Preussen, the only five-mast full ship ever built um, uh, in, in the world so far. And I always loved the ship and I dreamt about it and I said, one day I'm going to build that ship, you know. The Prusen came to grief in 1910 when she went aground beneath the white cliffs of Dover. To recreate her, Kraft purchased the hull of a partially built Polish ship added five masts, and installed 228 super luxurious passenger cabins. Each one decorated with the finest hardwoods, marble, and fabrics. But there's more to the Royal Clipper than meets the eye. Her five tons of sailcloth would cover 13 basketball courts. Aboard this super ship, they are furled and unfurled by an automated hydraulic winch system hidden inside the spars. One finger on a red button replaces dozens of hands on the rigging. Experienced riggers only have to climb the masts to do routine maintenance or free a tangled sheet. Even so, on the Royal Clipper, that's a trip of about 60 meters straight up. Like climbing up the side of a 20-story building. A building that's rocking in an earthquake. For Captain Mueller Seeran, the ease of sail handling on board Royal Clipper helps to avoid a potentially dangerous situation. In case of uh, squalls hitting the ship, we can take the sails in immediately. We don't have to lay aloft, we don't, because it's dangerous. With the remote control, we can uh, operate this uh, hydraulic motor, get the sail out and in, in terms of minutes. Number seven in our countdown of the world's most unique super ships, the Royal Clipper, the only five mast five-star sailing ship in the world. If the word for Royal Clipper is gorgeous, the word for our next super ship is gargantuan. Number six in our countdown, the Hellespont Fairfax, and number one when it comes to sheer mammoth size. Hellespont Fairfax is a double-hulled crude oil carrier so enormous that it would dwarf an aircraft carrier and with enough capacity in her 21 tanks to top up the gas tank of every car in Canada. It took 18 months to build the Fairfax at the Daewoo shipyards in South Korea for the Hellespont Corporation of Greece. She's one of the largest ships in the history of ships. Her rudder alone is bigger than a tennis court and her 380-meter deck would be a par-4 for Tiger Woods. The world's largest double-hulled tanker was built for only one purpose, to transport as much crude oil as possible from the wells of Arabia to the refineries of Texas and Louisiana, and then to hurry back for more. These ships are big ships, and there's only so many places in the world they can go and take a full loaded cargo. The base case scenario that's always examined when we do it any design was could be load in Saudi Arabia. And the prime discharge area that we always considered was U.S. Gulf area. It will take more than five weeks to sail the ship around the Cape of Good Hope, across the Atlantic to the Gulf of Mexico. The Hellespont Fairfax is divided below decks into three rows of 21 tanks. 
each one larger than an Olympic swimming pool. Total capacity is 3.2 million barrels. There are no shortcuts for this big, fat Greek supertanker en route from Arabia to Houston, Texas. A shortcut through Suez is out of the question, because weighed down with a full load of crude, it will tear the bottom out of the canal. The reason why we built these tankers is because they will carry roughly 50% more oil per trip, and yet our operating costs for bunkers and insurance and crew will only be about, say, 15% more. And this will equate to a savings that can be used both to uh, increase our profits and also give something to the oil companies that come to charter us. At today's oil prices, the Hellespont Fairfax earns back her $100 million price tag in just four round trips. But more importantly, she's one of the safest oil tankers ever constructed. She's our super ship number six. And if you see her steaming straight for your boat, you'd better get the Hellespont out of the way. We're halfway home in our countdown of the world's 10 most astounding super ships. Coming up next, a research vessel that rides rock steady, even in a perfect storm. And later, our number one monster ship, a piggybacking giant that has to sink itself to pick up its cargo. We're cruising into the top five of the world's most innovative super ships on a round-the-world voyage that takes us to beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, home of number five top ten super ship, the Kilo Moana. In the Hawaiian language, Kilo Moana means one who seeks to understand the sea, a fitting name for one of the most advanced research ships on the planet. But the secret that makes Kilo Moana our number five super ship is submerged well below the waterline. She's a swath vessel, small water plane area twin hull, a radical breakthrough in ship design. Instead of a traditional mono hull that takes heavy seas head on, Kilo Moana rides high above the wave action on a pair of submerged pontoons. Hidden away nearly seven meters below the surface, those twin submarine hulls make this ship stable, maneuverable, and unique. And because the twin propellers are so far apart, they, in conjunction with the forward thruster, will easily pivot the ship within her own length, making her a dream to maneuver in tight quarters, even in a strong crosswind. The physical makeup of the uh, swath design, you have parts of the hull that aren't uh, really known to most mariners. You have the, the haunch section, you have the strut section, and then you have the lower hull. And it's in this very narrow strut section of the hull where most of your waves will pass through. And that because it is so narrow, you have less action. You ride through and over the waves as opposed to going through with so much uh, wetted surface. Even when the waves are coming from the side of the ship, a condition that mariners call a beam sea, a swath vessel still rides smoothly without rolling like a monohull. In a beam sea, most of the wave energy is vertical, not horizontal, a force pushing up, rolling a conventional hull back and forth. But that energy is released into the open space between a swath ship's twin hulls and the submarine pontoons remain well below that vertical wave action. How revolutionary is swath technology? Just check out this footage from 1989, 
when a Canadian swath ship and an even larger monohull raced side by side in a violent Sea State 6. That's the monohull on the left, bouncing like a cork. And the swath vessel on the right, rock steady, so smooth that a glass of water on the windowsill doesn't spill a drop. Swath ships like Kilo Moana are almost immune to the motion of the ocean because their pontoons ride smoothly seven meters below the surface. But Kilo Moana's incredible stability is not just for show. Its mission is to take scientists on long duration trips to the mid-Pacific where their experiments and water column samples could help us to understand just what's going on with our increasingly wacky weather. Anyone who's ever been to sea in rough weather has wished for a ship like Kilo Moana. It's all thanks to Swath and Frederick George Creed, the Canadian who changed the way that scientists sail the ocean, but who never got to sail this way himself. Kilo Moana is our super ship number five. But while she's carrying scientists to the mid-Pacific, our next super ship is carrying just about everything else. Super ship number four in our top 10 countdown, Shanghai Express, a container ship that's three city blocks long. Her holds are stuffed and her deck is stacked with 7,500 cargo containers piled 17 stories high. And yet this super ship is still so quick in the water at 27 knots or 50 kilometers an hour that you could water ski behind her. En route from the Orient to Hamburg, Germany, Shanghai Express carries on the centuries-old tradition of trade with the Far East. And with nearly everything we wear, watch, walk in or play with being manufactured in China and other Asian countries, there's no shortage of goods for her to carry to the markets of the West. Below decks, Shanghai Express shows off the secret behind her speed. It's a 12-cylinder, 93,000-horsepower diesel, the biggest engine in the world. The pistons alone are four meters tall. At first glance, the K98 MC Man B&W diesel engine does look like any other. Fuel injection, crankshaft, piston, and turbocharger, all normal parts of most diesel engines, but this one is anything but ordinary. The technician on the right is six foot two inches or two meters tall in real life. Up on the bridge, the challenge is to keep Shanghai Express on course for the home port of Hamburg and out of harm's way. The English Channel is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. Our super ship number four is so efficient and so computerized that it requires only 27 crewmen to take her halfway around the world. At her home port of Hamburg, the unloading takes less than that. These robotic container shuttles cost a quarter million dollars each. They're fed by 11 gantry cranes soaring 100 feet into the sky. It's all part of a high-tech heavyweight ballet that keeps goods moving, prices low, and Shanghai Express on the water, ready for another voyage of this ultra-modern, ultra-giant fast boat to China. Only three more to go as we count down the 10 most amazing super ships on the seven seas. Still to come, a huge rig that sails itself, even through a perfect storm. And the super fast super ferry that turns the seaway into a freeway. She doesn't even look like a ship, but this is no motionless stick in the mud. It's a floating city on stilts, a self-propelled behemoth on an endless and vital search for oil and gas around the world. Super ship number three in our top 10 countdown, the Eric Rob. 
named for the great Viking sailor we call Eric the Red. Retracing the Norsemen's voyages of exploration across some of the most forbidding waters on Earth. It's the colossus of the offshore energy patch, the biggest semi-submersible oil drilling vessel in the business. At home port in Halifax, Nova Scotia, it occupies more than an acre of dock space and towers higher than the city's giant Angus L. Macdonald Bridge. To propel itself to any offshore drilling location on the planet, the Eric Raud will rely on these Rolls-Royce thrusters, the biggest ever built. The thrusters will perform three hugely important functions. They will push the ship through the water. They will act as rudders to steer her. And they will connect to a computer-operated positioning system to hold the Eric Raud rock steady over any oil or gas well under any weather conditions. At sea, the Eric Raud is a floating steel island where engineers, drilling crews and service teams, 120 people in all, work 12-hour shifts for 21 straight days before they're ferried back to dry land by helicopter. Oh, Frank. How are you doing? Oh, very good. There are no breaks from drilling unless something actually does break. And on the bridge, the navigation and power systems are constantly monitored. With the pontoon hulls submerged to drilling depth, the thrusters and their electric motors are now more than 29 meters, or 96 feet, below the surface. The six engines that power them are in four separate rooms on the number two deck. A loss of power on this ship not only means a loss of propulsion and steering, it could also lead to a nasty disconnect from the wellhead. The Eric Grout is like an island. As any other rig that's out there that's working offshore, it's like an island and it has a family group of people that are there together and they spend half of their life on the rig. Uh, they work uh, generally out here 21 days on, 21 days off. They, uh, a very close-knit community when they're, when they're at work uh, has to be that way. There's lots of other rigs out there that, uh, that can work in uh, deep water. There's rigs out there that can work in a harsh environment. Uh, the Eric Route is built to work in both uh, the harshest environment and, uh, and water depth uh, up to 10,000 feet, 3,000 meters. And uh, has the capability to stay on location even in a 100-year storm. Hundred-year storms are supposed to occur only once in a century, but the Eric Raud has already survived three of them in a single season. Waves as high as a ten-story building, just another day on the job for Eric Raud. The work is hazardous, dirty, exhausting, and essential to feeding our insatiable appetite for energy. Truly a task for a super ship. With the Eric Raud holding position number three in our super ship top ten countdown, it's time to climb aboard super ship number two, the Cat. And she's no oil drilling slowpoke. Sleek and graceful, she's the fastest car ferry in North America, cruising the crossing between Maine and Nova Scotia at super highway speeds. Inside, the cat looks and feels like a jet aircraft. But this jet has a 250 car garage and a casino for life in the fast lane. Reaching the open sea, the captain calls up maximum power. In less than a minute, the ferry is cruising at more than 42 knots. 
With one knot equal to 1.8 kilometers, that's more than 75 kilometers an hour. Maximum speed is over 90 kilometers an hour. At the end of each hull, 19,000 horsepower is spinning a jet shaft. This shaft in turn is driving a mighty six-bladed fan. Water is scooped up through openings underneath the cat and forced into the spinning fan. From there, it's blasted out through much smaller openings called water jets. The jets have another purpose besides pushing the cat at breakneck speed. They're also used instead of a rudder to turn the ship. In fact, the water jets will turn the cat so sharply, anyone not wearing a seat belt would risk serious injury. The amount of water is amazing that travels through the four jets. Uh, it equals 72 ton of water per second approximately, which is 18,000 liters per jet per second. That's approximately 80,000 cans of beer per second. <laughs> No ordinary steel ship of this size could reach the cat's top speed of 90 kilometers or 55 miles an hour. The secret to this super ship's warp speed is its unique aluminum construction. Built in Tasmania and inspired by the same engineering principles that make a six pack of beer strong enough to stand on, the cat is as lightweight yet as sturdy as a jumbo jet. It's more akin to building aircraft than it is to building ships. 747s are built out of, for example. On completion, the cat weighs in at just over 300 tons, or 32 million beer cans, is 91 meters long, 26 meters wide, and has an incredible rate of speed resulting from a combination of three things. It's lightweight construction, slender wave-piercing hulls, and powerful water jet propulsion. When the water jets of this wingless wonder rev up to cruising speed, the cat is 750 tons of metal, fuel, and flesh flying across the Bay of Fundy from Bar Harbor to Yarmouth. The big thing that everyone's amazed at with this type of craft is the size of the wheel. And here's basically my ship's wheel. 60 millimeters in circumference and you can operate it with your finger. By land, this trip would take 10 hours. On a conventional ferry boat, more than six. But the cat makes the crossing in less than three hours. You've got to look quick to catch our super ship number two. A bright flash on the deep blue sea. biggest, to the quickest, to the strongest. Counting down the top 10 super ships on the water today. In a moment, we'll reveal the king of them all. Number one, a mighty super ship. In our search for the world's number one super ship, we chose a vessel that came to Korea to collect this gigantic offshore oil production platform that's just been completed. The Nakika is assigned to drill for crude in the Gulf of Mexico, more than 10,000 sea miles away. Super ship number one in our top 10 countdown is Mighty Servant One the super heavyweight lifter that will carry Nakiko all the way to Texas. A world record piggyback ride on the strongest ship in the galaxy. Mighty Servant truly deserves the title of super ship number one because not only can she have to hitchhike her like the Nakika, she can submerge herself eight meters underwater to gently pick up the load. In 1998, the owners of the Mighty Servant One, Dockwise Shipping of the Netherlands, decided to lengthen, widen, and extensively modify their vessel, making her the largest of her kind in the world. The specially strengthened unobstructed cargo deck, 150 meters long by 50 meters wide, bigger than a soccer field, 
provides unequaled support for the transportation of enormous cargoes, such as semi-submersible drilling units, harsh environment deep water jack-up rigs, and large floating production platforms. As a result of these modifications, the hauling capacity of Mighty Servant 1 increased from 21,000 to 45,000 tons, which means it can carry twice its own weight on deck. Something very dramatic and very dangerous is being contemplated here. The Nakika on its floating barge arrives just off the port side. During the coming night, the barge will submerge and Nakika will be floating free by about 8 a.m. the following morning. To get one floating object on board another floating object, three things have to happen. Mighty Servant 1 has to sink below the level of Nakika's hull 22 meters, or nearly 80 feet. Nikika has to be pulled on top of the sunken ship, a ship that has become a submarine, to an exact position above the deck. Finally, Mighty Servant One has to rise up, lifting Nikika completely out of the water. That delicate ballet takes place in a Korean harbor as the mighty servant fills her ballast tanks with nearly 70 million kilograms of seawater. With the Nakika holding position, the mighty servant begins to ballast down, a procedure that will take all night. Most of the mass of the Mighty Servant 1 is below the surface. The bridge near the bow and the two stabilizing towers at the stern is all that remains in sight. With winches straining and mighty tugboats shoving and pulling against the wind and waves, Nikika makes her way across the sunken hull of the Mighty Servant. It's a game of megatons and millimeters, with millions of dollars and many lives at stake. With the Nakika in position, the refloating of Mighty Servant can finally begin. Draining the ballast tanks will take 12 nervous hours. One slight miscalculation, one false move, and the rig could topple, sinking Mighty Servant. Finally, the trip to Texas begins. Day after day, the Mighty Servant One plows on through the most inhospitable waters on Earth. Too big to enter most harbors, but stocked with enough fuel to stay at sea for nearly two months. She will burn 60 tons of fuel a day, and it takes 57 days to reach the Gulf of Mexico and Corpus Christi, Texas. But she gets the job done our number one super ship, Mighty Servant. We've counted down the top 10 of the world's most unique and extraordinary vessels. The swiftest, the strongest, the sturdiest, the most enchanting. Each one truly worthy of the name. Every one, a super ship.